Good morning, everyone. Happy Good Friday on behalf of all the uh, Ivanies. I'm just going to do a quick introduction, and, uh, and then I'm going to jump into today's message before we take opportunity to lead you guys in communion as our little family here. So this is my wife, Jennifer. Hello. Joseph. Hi. Emma. Alexis. Are you going to wave? No. <laughs> this is Jaden. Hello. And this is, uh, <laughs> this is Aaron. And so uh, we're pleased to be here today and, and trust that everyone is uh, having a good morning and you enjoyed the worship today. And uh, we're just going to uh, just take a moment here and dive in today's message. Well, as we gather in homes uh, all over our city today, we do so remembering the immense sacrifice of Christ. He is the high priest of this new covenant that he has issued into being. He's the head of the church, the head of our church, and he is both the author and the finisher of our faith. I want to remind you today on this Good Friday of the great exchange that has taken place. Of course, you know what an exchange is. An exchange is the act of giving one thing and receiving another. We remind ourselves today that Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, through his very life and body, exchanged an old system for a new system, an old way that needed to be dispatched of because of man's corruption. It just was not working for a new way that the Son of God would make work as every part of it comes directly from Him. In Hebrews chapter 10, beginning in verse 10, I'm going to read you that portion of scripture today. I'm going to be reading from the New Living Translation. And I encourage you to follow along. If you do not have that translation, of course, it will be provided for you at the bottom of the screen. I'm going to be reading from verse 10 through to verse 14. It says this, For God's will was for us to be made holy by the sacrifice of the body of Jesus Christ once for all time. Under the Old Covenant, the priest stands and ministers before the altar day after day, offering the same sacrifices again and again, which can never take away sins. But our high priest offered himself to God as a single sacrifice for sins, good for all time. Then he sat down in the place of honor at God's right hand. There he waits until his enemies are humbled and made a footstool under his feet, for by that one offering, he forever made perfect those who are being made holy. We recognize that what has been done has been done once and for all time. We also know that Christ's sacrifice was predicted. It was prophesied hundreds of years before this historic event of Jesus going to the cross ever took place. It's in Isaiah 53. I'm going to encourage you to turn there again. If you do not have your Bible, it'll be provided at the, the bottom of the screen. But I think through this account in Isaiah, through this prophecy that is recorded, we get a great understanding of the enormity of this sacrifice of Christ and therefore the enormity of his passion for us. It's only 12 verses long, but I'm going to read the whole chapter to us now. It says this, Who has believed our message? To whom has the Lord revealed his powerful arm? My servant grew up in the Lord's presence like a tender shoot, tender green shoot, like a root in a dry ground. There was nothing beautiful or majestic about his appearance, nothing to attract us to him. He was despised and rejected, a man of sorrows, acquainted with deepest grief. We turned our backs on him and looked the other way. He was despised and we did not care. Yet it was our weaknesses he carried. It was our sorrows that weighed him down. And we thought his troubles were a punishment from God, a punishment for his own sins, but he was pierced for our rebellion, crushed for our sins. He was beaten so that we could be whole. He was whipped so that we could be healed. All of us, like sheep, have strayed away. We have left God's plan to follow our own, yet the Lord laid on him the sins of us all. He was oppressed and treated harshly, 
yet he never said a word. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as sheep is silent before the shearers, he did not open his mouth. Unjustly condemned, he was led away. No one cared that he died without descendants, that his life was cut short in midstream. But he was struck down for the rebellion of my people. He had done no wrong and never deceived anyone, but he was buried like a criminal. He was put in a rich man's grave. But, the Lord's good, but it was the Lord's good plan to crush him and to cause him grief. Yet when his life was made an offering for sin, he will have many descendants. He will enjoy a long life, and the Lord's good plan will prosper in his hands. When he sees all that is accomplished by his anguish, he will be satisfied. Because of his experience, my righteous servant will make it possible for many to be counted righteous, for he will bear all their sins. I will give him the honors of a victorious soldier because he exposed himself to death. He was counted among the rebels. He bore the sins of many and interceded for the rebels. It wasn't only a systematic change that Jesus was bringing in. He wasn't merely exchanging a system whereby sacrifices were brought in the way of doves and bulls and goats and sheep in order to have one human sacrifice once and for all. But within that mighty work, we do see an exchange that affects our lives, both here on the earth and for eternity. And I'd like to mention five aspects of this exchange that I want us to just consider today on this Good Friday as we think about the sacrifice of Christ and as we prepare ourselves in just a few moments to engage in communion, the Lord's Supper, in homes all over our city. As you study God's Word, there's no question you're going to find other types of exchanges that I could have mentioned today, but I think these are the ones that we should ha perhaps focus upon as we recognize that all the evil that was due us as sinners was placed upon Jesus so that all the good that was due Jesus might be made available to us by God's grace. The first aspect of exchange that I want to make mention of today is that Jesus was punished so that we may be forgiven. If you're a follower of Christ and have confessed Him as Lord and Savior, let me remind you of today of what you have been forgiven of. In Ephesians chapter 1, verse 7, it says this, In Him we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace. He was punished so that we may be forgiven. Number two, Jesus was wounded so that we might be healed. In 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 22 to 24, it says this, He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When they heard their, hurled their insult at him, he did not retaliate. When he suffered, he made no threats. Instead, he entrusted himself to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to sin and live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. You are healed. This is not just a spiritual metaphor. In other translations, it is very clear what's being described here. It's an association with the physical pain and physical suffering that not only that Christ endured, but also that we would be spared from. Christ's physical body was bruised and wounded so that your physical body would be healed. The third aspect of this exchange is that Jesus was made sin with our sinfulness so that we might be made righteous with his righteousness. In Romans chapter 3, verse 23 to 25, it says this, For everyone has sinned. We all fall short of God's glorious standard, yet God in His grace freely makes us right in His sight. He did this through Christ Jesus when He freed us from the penalty of our sins. For God presented Jesus as the sacrifice for sin. People are made right with God when they believe that Jesus sacrificed his life 
shedding his blood. Jesus was made sin for our sinfulness so that we could be made righteous with his righteousness. Number four, Jesus died our death so that we might share in his life. 1 John chapter 5, verses 11 to 12 says this, And this is what God has testified. He has given us eternal life, and this life is in His Son. Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son does not have life. Jesus died our death so that we may share His life. Number five, Jesus was made a curse for us that we might receive the blessing. In Galatians chapter 3, verses 13 to 14, it says this, But God has rescued us from the curse pronounced by the law. When he was hung on the cross, he took upon himself the curse of our wrongdoing. For it is written in the Scriptures, Cursed is everyone who is hung on a tree. Through Christ Jesus, God blessed the Gentiles with the same blessing he promised Abraham so that we who are believers might receive the promised Holy Spirit through faith. Jesus was made a curse so that we may receive a blessing. A great exchange has taken place. What should have been our punishment is now our forgiveness through Christ. What should have been our wounds is now our healing through Christ. What should have been our sin is now our righteousness in Christ. What should have been our death is now our life in Christ. What should have been our curse is now our blessing in Christ Jesus. All made possible through the work of the cross and the great exchange that took place that we have now access to because Christ is in our lives and we are in his. Because of his sacrifice on the cross, we recognize this as a good Friday. Let us never forget what has been exchanged for our benefit and for his glory, a glory that we have been allowed to share in. This is our faith. This is our hope. This is our everything, all made possible through the cross. In Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 to 3, it says this, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight which slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up, and let us run with endurance the race that God has set before us. We do this by keeping our eye on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. Because of the joy awaiting him, he endured the cross, disregarding the shame. Now he is seated at the place of honor besides God's throne. Think of all the hostility he endured from sinful people. Then you won't become weary. Then you won't give up. On this of all days, we remember the immense sacrifice of Christ. He is the high priest of the new covenant. He is the head of the church. He is both the author and the finisher of our faith. As we keep our eyes upon him, as we forever remember the work of the cross in our lives, let us not become weary, but rather let's endure as he has endured in Jesus' name. Well, as we prepare ourselves to remember the sacrifice of Christ by coming together for the Lord's Supper, coming together for communion, as you make preparations for that in your homes, we're going to sing one more song, and I want you just to strongly consider all that Christ has done, all that he has exchanged for us, all that we now have access to, because he has not only given us his death, but he has shared his life with us, a life that we will celebrate on Easter Sunday in a really exciting way. So let's prepare ourselves and let's sing this song together as we think about these things in Jesus' name.
Awesome, everybody. We're going to get ready for communion. We just did it real simple today. We have some juice, have a nice homemade roll. <laughs> and so what we're going to do now is we're just going to, actually, I'll get Jaden. You help me distribute that. On your side, guys, just pull off a little piece. Okay? Alexis, you got your snacks. We ask our family, you can take your snacks, to Until you can explain communion, we hold off on our kids participating it in it. Same as with baptism. That's awesome. There's a little piece now, Joe. Good luck to you, man. <laughs> awesome. Go ahead, Emma. Thank you. Thank you, Mommy. Well, before we uh, participate in communion together, I'm going to lead my family in just a, a little recognition of what we talked about today and, and the the things that we have the blessing of seeing exchanged in our lives because of the work of Christ. And so I'm going to get you guys just to repeat after me, okay? Uh, and you guys can repeat as well at home. Jesus took my punishment, Jesus took my punishment and gave me his forgiveness. And gave me his forgiveness. Jesus took my wounds, Jesus took my wounds and gave me his healing. And gave me his healing. Jesus took my sin. My sin and gave me his righteousness and gave me his righteousness Jesus took my death Jesus took my death and gave me his life gave me his life Jesus took my curse Jesus took my curse and gave me his blessing and gave me his blessing 
It says in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, On the same night that he was betrayed, Jesus took some bread and gave thanks to God for it. Then he broke it into pieces and said, This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's partake of the bread together. In the same way, he took the cup of wine after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant between God and his people, an agreement confirmed with my blood. Do this in remembrance of me as often as you drink it. For every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are announcing the Lord's death until he comes again. Let's partake of the cup together. Awesome. Well, just in your own way, just encourage our family. Let's just take a second to thank God for all that he has done for us. We thank you, Lord. We praise your name. We glorify you. Father God, we thank you for giving us your only begotten son, Jesus. We thank you for coming and living a sinless life upon this earth and sacrificing yourself for us so that we could be free, so that we could have all of the benefits that come through you. We praise your name for this. We praise your name for our forgiveness. We praise your name for our healing. We praise your name for the righteousness you have given us. We praise your name, Lord God, for for the, the curse that has been broken and the blessing that we have received, Lord God. We thank you that we no longer need to fear death, for you have given us life. And we praise your name. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody said... Amen. Amen. Well, on behalf of our family, we say the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. The Lord be gracious to you and lift his countenance upon you. And the Lord give you peace everywhere you go. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Happy Good Friday, everyone. And before you go, just one quick challenge. Maybe before you, you have your lunch today or your supper, I just challenge all the dads out there. Just take the opportunity to read through... Um, Uh, Hebrews chapter 10. It's a great way of just honoring the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. We're going to do that as a family before we eat uh, this afternoon, and we just kind of challenge you to do the same. Awesome. Bless you guys. We'll see you 9 o'clock and 9.30 on Easter Sunday. The Lord bless you.